Hi, I'm Eric Fretland, and this is Breaking It Down. On today's segment, we take a look at the Sooners' performance in Lubbock against Texas Tech this past Saturday, specifically the performance of the defense. Anytime an offense sets the kind of records that Texas Tech did on Saturday, it brings up questions not just about the defensive players, but also about the coaching staff. Today, we're going to issue a report card of sorts to Mike Stoops in the defense, grading in four different areas. How prepared Mike Stoops had the defense, the defensive play calls, how effectively the personnel was utilized, and the overall execution and, and discipline. This first play that we're going to look at is sort of a microcosm of all four of these, but it's a good way to measure how prepared the defense was because it's a variation of something Texas Tech uses quite frequently. Third most penalized team in the country. First On first and long, Texas Tech calls a simple three-part play that's meant to take advantage of OU's zone coverage. It opens up. Tony Brown, only his fourth catch of the season. As I mentioned, the play is a simple three-part play, but still relatively simple in execution. As you can see, we've got two receivers lined up to the right side and one to the left. We've got one halfback in the backfield and an H-back lined up to the left side of the formation. The play starts with this receiver going in motion. This draws the attention of all of the defenders, and it causes the outside linebacker, who is playing over the slot, to come down to a more natural position. And more importantly, it causes the safeties to shift because that's part of the typical defensive rotation anytime they see a motion going across the formation. Now Ahmad Thomas is responsible for the deep middle of the field, and Stephen Parker is responsible for coming down and defending this curl to flat zone, which is the defender responsible for the throw that Patrick Mahomes wants to target, which is this post route. The receiver goes in motion, and the ball is snapped when he's about here. So the first part of the play is the fake inside handoff, the play action to, uh, to the halfback. This fake handoff draws the attention of the linebackers, and they take a few steps down to defend the inside run. Then the second part is, as the receiver continues across the formation and runs a swing route into the flat, Patrick Mahomes looks at the swing and fakes a throw there. This captures the attention of Stephen Parker, who then completely sells out to defend the swing pass and, and sprints down and in an effort to cover the flat. This leaves the area directly behind him, the post route, wide open because, again, he has sprinted down to cover this route, and the linebacker, who might be able to get over and help, has come down to defend the run and then over to defend the swing pass, which makes it the simplest of throws to throw directly behind Stephen Parker and complete the pass to the post route. And there's nothing Jordan Thomas can do about it because he's expect he's playing with outside leverage and he's expecting the inside help from Stephen Parker, who should be in the area. There were multiple occasions like this where Texas Tech ran a play that OU should have been ready for, but they weren't. However, there were multiple other occasions where they, were, they had clearly been coached and knew what to expect. And for that reason, we're only going to give Mike Stoops a C-. minus. Now, another responsibility of the defensive coordinator is to call the right plays and the right coverages in order to, to give the defense the best chance against whatever the offense is trying to do. And this in call, includes calling blitzes at the right time and blitzing with the right people. On this 3rd and 10 play, Mike Stoops tries to get way too creative with his blitz scheme in an attempt to disrupt the offensive blocking scheme. Jordan Evans, at the top of the screen, rushes and then drops back into coverage, but isn't close enough to cover anyone. Oboe, at the bottom of the screen, does the same thing. And Austin Roberts, next to Oboe, fakes like he's going to rush, then fakes like he's going to drop back into coverage, and then go, finally ends up going on the rush, but the offensive line is not fooled and the blitz is not effective. Because of the number of ineffective blitzes that were called, as well as Mike Stoops' propensity to call soft zone coverage, we give him a D-plus for play calling. One area that's related to defensive play calling is how a defensive coordinator uses their players, and that's what we're grading Mike Stoops on next. First and foremost, he utilized his best pass rusher, Obo Okoronkwo, by dropping him into coverage way too often. Secondly, he used Will Johnson to line up in one-on-one -on -one man coverage against some of the best slot receivers in the Big 12, which, since Will Johnson is a linebacker, is not the best use of his talents. Third, he showed an unwillingness to substitute personnel on first and second downs, meaning that when Texas Tech came out in their five-wide offensive set with five receivers, inside linebackers Emmanuel Beal and Jordan Evans were matched up against those same slot receivers. 
One point in his favor is that on some obvious passing downs, he substituted linebacker Curtis Bolton for Emmanuel Beal, and he used Bolton as an interior pass rusher. However, despite this, we give him a grade of D for personnel utilization. Lastly, the area that we're going to look at is overall execution and discipline. Lastly, we give a grade for overall execution and discipline for the defense. And this is for the whole defense, not just for Mike Stoops. The first area that was profoundly lacking was the quality of tackling by the defensive backs. There were plenty of plays where Texas Tech completed a two or three yard screen pass to the outside, but an OU cornerback missed the tackle and it ended up being a 20 yard gain. Secondly, the integrity of the zone coverage by the linebackers and safeties as demonstrated by this play, um, caused a lot of problems for OU in defending the middle of the field. As the final box score would indicate, the grade we give for overall execution and discipline is an F. Because of a lack of preparedness, poor defensive play calling and player utilization, and just a general lack of discipline and execution, we see results like what we saw on Saturday. If the goal is to win a Big 12 championship or to be considered an elite team, Performances like this simply can't happen. I'm Eric Fretland. This is Breaking It Down.